it helps us to intellectually contemplate and reflect. Intellect, okay. our intellect should not be paralyzed. Heart is paralyzed. There is unknown worries and I am upset. I have nervousness. I have fear. This is intellect is paralyzed. I have to mm. think, where is the fear? I have to find out, oh, is there any fear? Is there any reason to be nervous? We don't think. Why we don't think? Because we don't do the practice, the mind is not pure, and the impure mind paralyzes the intellect. Mm. Self-inquiry. This is the way the self-inquiry has to be done. Today, we will see the comparison between the impure states of the mind and the pure states of the mind. Impure states and pure states of the mind. Or just the opposite. Oppose, say, for example, opposite of guilt mind. Guilt mind. So opposite should be the forgiveness mind. Home to forgive, I have to forgive my own self. I have to forgive my own self. And my mind that practices self-compassion learns from the mistakes and releases the guilt in a healthy manner. Okay. Guilt says, I will continue to have a guilt because that will that is going to help me. When the intellect is paralyzed, that is the way we keep on thinking. And the guilt goes on increasing because I have the similar thoughts of a guilt. So how we get rid of the guilt? By contemplation and reflection. So through the contemplation, I recognize the wisdom in forgiveness. Not the wisdom in continuously living into the guilt. Are you getting it? Forgive The wisdom in forgiveness of, of who and of what? Ah, yeah, if I have a guilt, so I have a guilt on myself. It is the guilt with, that is that is causing constant uh, upsurge of the thoughts, and then I'm harming myself. So I have to forgive myself. There should be an attitude of forgiveness. One woman, one woman who told me that two years ago I should have told my son that you have this problem and get the treatment. After two years, she developed the guilt that had I said this, he should not have this problem. I said, no, not at all. It has nothing to do with you. But you are attached to that thought that my son did not care himself because I did not tell him. And now that thought was constantly repeating and uh, she got totally frustrated. Nervousness and the worry came. So whom to forgive? I have to forgive myself. What I have told, what I have not told. It depends on the state of your mind what others will receive and not receive, it also depends on their state of the mind. Are you getting it? Yeah. So what happens when we have that attitude of forgiveness to ourselves? It leads to self-acceptance. Self-acceptance uh, moves deeper into inner peace. And inner peace gives me the ability to move forward. Oh, I have learned a good lesson in my life. I will maintain awareness of this incident. And if something happens like this, I will communicate. Done. 
Now, why we have a guilt and why we should ask forgiveness? So I have to acknowledge the mistake. I don't brag and continue to be attached to that mistake. I have to acknowledge the mistake and then I have, should have an ability to move forward. I can change. Where is their problem? Past impressions, good and bad, that is known as the vasana. I wake up in the morning, that vasana living at the deeper unconscious level, it triggers the, my mind because of the object or situation outside. It creates an imagined pain or pleasure, but in case of a guilt, it creates an imagined pain I should have told that women started crying before me. No, oh, no, 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 you know, you don't, I should have told, I should have told. I said, first thing to understand, the moment you gave birth to your son, he is totally separate and independent of you. And now this guy is almost 50 years old. And you are, you are giving birth to a guilt in your mind. So when you contemplate and reflect, your thought process extracts the self-love and the wisdom from the past impressions. and you start growing through a self-forgiveness, you overcome the desire to hold on to the guilt. You have to listen to this again and again and find out those situations in your life, what happened in the past, I should have acted otherwise. Now, what should be the opposite of anxiety mind or uh, fear? Anxiety mind. Let us take anxiety mind. What should be the opposite? Uh, anxiety mind opposite should be a mind with an equanimity, mind with an emotional poise. Problem, my friend, is that we don't recognize these positive and pure states of the mind, we only are more and more aware of the negative impure states of the mind in our life. And that is why today's topic focuses on the pure states of anxiety mind, uh, emotional poise. So now let us define this emotional poise. Uh, any event, any situation, I maintain the calmness, balanced and peaceful state even in the face of uncertainty and challenges. Fear is there, okay, thank you. Mind, let me know the fear. The moment you think in that way, 50% of the fear is already gone. 50% of the anxiety is already gone because you made your intellect active. Intellect is not paralyzed. That is why in the journey of the self-inquiry, Contemplation and reflection plays an important role. Plays an important role. So what happens? I should have a faith on, in my intellect. I should have a faith on my inner resilience. I don't have that faith. Normally, normal situation, I have a faith. You are sitting in your home listening to me. Already you have a faith. Your car is parked. Uh, and then, yes, you have still have a trust and a faith. Oh, everything will go smoothly. I am living in this home and talking to you. There is a faith. So that faith is erupted in Anxiety. What do you mean by anxiety? Let me define in a different way. My, I want to hold on to worry and nervousness, believing it will protect me from the fear. 
So my mind is constantly holding on to the worry and nervousness by thoughts associated with an emotion. But how can I be calm and peaceful when I'm holding on to the worry and anxiety and the nervousness? It is not possible. So when I recognize the importance of an emotional poise, check again and again every day. Uh, am I driving with an emotional poise or with anxiety or excitement? Excitement is also a sign of anxiety. So when I start driving, I say emotional poise is there? Yes. Are you clear, are you clear that I have to drive within the speed limit, follow the rules? Yes. Mind, you should not overtake unnecessarily any vehicle. Now you see, these are the thoughts of an emotional voice. Hmm. Uh, how dare he speed it up? Let me also overtake. Anxiety. So in anxiety, intellect is already paralyzed. It is the impulsive mind which has taken over. So now I want to hold on to my anxiety to take over the other guy. And then he also takes over. And then we have a problem. But we, we, when we have an emotional poise, the stress is reduced. You raise your self-awareness. And when you raise your self-awareness, you have an ability to respond with clarity and grace. What we are trying to do, we never recognize that these pure states of the mind exist all the time and we don't acknowledge it, we don't recognize it. Because you don't recognize it, so the negative and the impure states of the mind takes over and then you we are seeking a solution. Yeah. How should I be recognizing it? That is what we are learning, that emotional poise, opposite of anxiety mind. Look at it. Forgiveness mind, opposite of a guilt mind. A particular thought is being repeated. I should have done this. I should have done it. I am really crazy. I am harming myself. Now, hold on. Forgiveness mind. Mind, calm down. <laughs> that is what we are learning. Uh, these are the pure states of the mind. Another pure states of the mind is the content mind. What is the opposite of it? It is the money mind. So we have a sense of contentment all the time. Provided the mind is pure, it recognizes the content. In that sense of contentment, I live in a higher awareness. I live in calmness. I live in peace. I don't recognize the content mind. So you remember, oh, where is the content mind? I'm craving for something. Mind, do you have a contentment? Yes, I have a contentment on many things. Have contentment here and now. <laughs> oh. So that is how the intellect, you contemplate and reflect. Contemplation means the intellect uses the thought process associated with an emotion and you get rid of the money mind. So what is the basic of, it is the inner state of the mind. Contentment comes from inside. Independent of anything outside. And the money mind is always going outside. It has an imagined pleasure. But money can serve this body only. It cannot serve the money or it can serve the mind indirectly. You have a 10 bedroom house, you only sleep in one bed. You <laughs> have 50 cars, you can only drive one car at a time. So when I, my intellect thinks in this way, the sense of contentment, I reveal that sense of contentment inside.
Why? Because my mind impulsively do not relate the wealth to seek pleasure. Pleasure is happiness is not the property of any 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 type of wealth. I say this house gives me happiness. Does the house say that I will give you happiness? So you see, when you change your entire attitude, you reveal, you live with that pure states of the mind. And when you continue to live with the pure states of the mind every day, weeks, days, months, years, you have changed your attitude. The contentment, the contentment, contentment cultivates a sense of sufficiency in myself, a sense of completeness in me. How come? Because then I'm easily detached to the different situation, people, relationship and material pursuits. Does it mean that I should stop working? No, you're working. You're still working. But now you're working, yes, how I should be creative in my business, pursuit in my professional life, how I should be creative. Your mind is not thinking, if I have this much of money, I will have a pleasure. So you don't build a castle in the air. So opposite of money mind is the content mind or contentment, you can say. So emotional poise, forgiveness, contentment. Let us go a little deeper. What should be the opposite of strong likes and dislikes mind? How you say, there is no like, there is no dislike. You go to the mall and you are watching everything, but your mind is not does not have a binding likes and dislikes. Binding means you saw some, say for example, you saw the laptop and your mind goes back to the same shop again in the imagination. Oh, that is very good. That is very good. Or a girl, that is very good. So what is known as, it is the mind with an equanimity you treat everything equal. You have a like inside, but that like does not become the craving. There is an emotional calmness. In normal situation, we respond with an emotional calmness, but when this my impulsive mind takes over, when I have a strong likes and dislikes, that Craving mind disturbs my emotional comments. Are you getting it? Yeah. It is not an object. It is not a person. It is not a thing. It is not a situation. It is my head. So when I have an emotional calmness, I live in a higher awareness. And when we live in a higher awareness, the impulsive mind cannot touch me. I don't have likes. Yes, I have likes and dislikes, but likes and dislikes does not create a repeated thought. That's okay. Done. But when the likes and dislikes causes a craving and obsession, your mind keeps on repeating the same thought. It gets associated with an emotion. You have a strong likes and dislikes mind. Another way to understand the emotional calmness that your, your mind is now impartial, objective, unbiased. Mm. You, live, you go every, anywhere, talk to everyone, but check. Impartial, impartiality is there, yes. Objectivity is there, yes. Unbiased, 
yes you sublimate strong likes and dislikes you sublimate your craving you sublimate your obsession are you getting it yeah so we have to remember oh these are the pure states of the mind forgiveness mind emotional poise mind and content mind and now the fourth one is the emotional emotional calmness look at it sometime what happens we start rationalizing so it's a rationalizing mind it does not see the cause and effect relationship the rationalizing mind has a very severe emotional negative content what that negative content says my way is the only way without any rhyme and reason dad you don't understand my situation no hold on dad let me listen to you think of it i will think over it reflect on it and i'll come back to you so when i use these thoughts it means i want the integrity of my personality and opposite of integrity is i simply rationalize no no i know everything you know this is you know, my way is the only way you are crazy and i have declared that you are crazy hold on calm down calm down calm down. your friends call you come on let's have a come to the restaurant and have a beer so now you use your integrity i have an integrity with myself i'm not interested there oh yes i'm very busy i have to walk the dog and i have to cook my meal and i'm little bit tired i have to relax oh let us do it next time Are you telling a lie? Yes, for the right reason. <laughs> Do it for the right reason because it is not harming you. You are holding on to your integrity that you are yeah. not interested. You are not taking any excuse. That is your integrity, man. <laughs> mm. That is your integrity. same situation when i was quite young of your age and i had the same challenges oh my goodness my wife told me to get uh get the vegetables and the fruits otherwise she will be she will be angry over me so are you coming or not you know i'm just thinking i should come to you but but you know let me finish this today next time we will think of finished stop the talk bye bye mm. have, have a good time with your beer let me have a good time with my meditation <laughs> <laughs> you internally say internally you are talking to yourself the integrity i should not lose integrity with myself normally we talk integrity in the profession integrity in our personal and family life or it about the integrity within with me if i am i have an integrity with myself i i have an integrity with everyone so opposite of rationalizing mind is a mind committed to honesty to oneself accountability to oneself ethical behavior to oneself don't try to brag and promote just live with yourself and when you live with an integrity you don't have any conflict you don't have any doubt that's what we are talking we are talking the pure states of the mind we hardly recognize even though we have it and you have it in abundance and still you are disturbed 
You don't want to harm anyone. You don't want to cheat anyone. Is it not an integrity and honest mind? The answer is yes. You feel accountable when you do something wrong. No, but you are doing everything right to everyone. That is your emotion. That is your thought. That is your feeling. But you don't recognize it. Even having that pure states of the mind, you get disturbed. Are you recognizing? Yeah. We have to acknowledge it and we have to recognize it. It does not mean that you go out and declare, I have an integrity mind, whosoever wants to come. No. I'm living within myself with an emotional calmness, with an emotional poise, with a sense of contentment, with a sense of forgiveness. Mind is clear, relaxed, free from the fear. But when it comes to this situation, I force myself with a clarity. Yes, this is what it is. I'm, I live with these values. Because you have been living with these values, but you don't have a power. You find yourself very weak. Mm. If somebody invites you for a drink and you become weak, how come? How come you become well, so? <laughs> so that's how I, I planned the lesson. I said, no, I will take up all your issues which you have discussed with me. So it what happens, you know, you, you have more confidence in you. A trustworthiness in your personality and attitude. And that accelerates the process of evolution that accelerates the process of your spiritual awakening. My master taught me for years together. It took me many years to understand this. Now, I already have a pure state of the mind. I don't want to harm anybody, but people think in that. We let them think. It is their problem. Do I have an emotional content? Am I committed to honesty? Yes, I'm committed to honesty. Am I committed to accountability? Yes. So I told you before also, so I thought that how to be accountable in my professional life when I was working in the Ministry of Federal Ministry of Health in India. Mm. So I said, one day it clicked to me. So the office starts at 9.30. I, I always reach at 9 a.m. From 9 a.m. to 9.30, I had both the job. Administrative, I have to administer a lot of teachers, and I have to do some administrative work. So 9 to 9.30, I used to sit on my chair in my office and I say, what are the work I need to do today? And I used to leave the office after half an hour. You'll be surprised that director did not dare to say anything to me. <coughs> Just, just by such a simple act. Not a single person, not a director. Many directors have changed, but they said, don't touch him. Don't say anything. And there, you, so it's, it's very easy to do it, but we don't recognize our integrity. We don't recognize our honesty. We don't recognize our accountability. We are responsible, finished. I told you a hundred of times that I always, I'm always, I always come five minutes before the session begins. Sometime it becomes late, it's okay. Look at it. So, such a simple steps. 
grandiose mind. What is the opposite of grandiose mind? It's very destructive mind. Grandiose mind. I am. I have infinity complex and I want to be feel superior before everyone. Mm. That is what the grandiose mind. And opposite of the grandiose mind, you can say the humble mind. So should I live with that humble mind? Yes, all the time. Why not? No, but the world is not like this. Let the world be not like this. Humble mind means that, humble means first is that you live with a higher awareness, you live with the responsibility, you live with the recognition of others position, situation, and condition. That is what the humble mind. The humble mind does not mean that you stop responding to the people, situation, and event. You stop responding to your dad. No. You respond. But you respond, you don't react. Mm. Dad, okay. I think you are right. You have taught me a good lesson. Let me think it over, reflect on this, and I will come back to you. Grandiose mind that you are, you, you have put your ego at a very lower level. You crush your ego. You listen to the others. Ah, you can respond to them later. That is humble mind, but humble mind doesn't mean that you don't want to say anything. Why you not don't want to say anything? Today is in a lesson we are learning the pure states of the mind against the common impure states of the mind that pops up in our daily life and it makes our life Hell, you wake up in the morning and you have a monkey mind and the whole day becomes upset. <laughs> you don't recognize you have a focused mind. Say your mind is totally distracted and still you go to your job, isn't it? Still you drive to your work. Still you do all your work. So I don't recognize there is already a focused mind, but I recognize I pay more attention to my monkey mind. I may have a lot of things to do. It does not mean that I should not be focused on the talk here and now. <clears throat> It is so simple. A recognition and acknowledgement is required. What I have to do now. Let me do it with total attention. Oh, oh the senses are distracting me. Let me withdraw my senses from the objects. Oh, it is because of the likes and dislikes. Let me pay attention here. Emotional calm mind, emotional wise mind, content mind, forgiveness mind, integrity mind, focused mind. I have to remember this. Oh, do I have a focused mind while I'm driving? Answer is yes. Normally we, we start picking up the things impulsively while driving. And then there is always a problem. <clears throat> we have it. It's a natural tendency of the pure states of the mind. So I have to think how to, first I have to remember, then I have to think about these different pure states of the mind. And then I have to see whenever the impure states of the mind takes over. I have to replace it with the pure states of the mind and you will see the result from the day one.
Uh, let us take another sheep mind. What is sheep mind? It follows a convention. What, whatever the society thinks is right, I think. Same, take your example. Younger generation uh, in present day society thinks after the job I should land up to the bar. And in the morning I should have hangover. That is the beauty of the younger generation. So your mind is ingrained in that idea of an American society. That is the sheep mind, which is causing the disturbances to you. <laughs> what you are doing, you do it. I don't disturb you. But internally I say, don't disturb me. What I'm doing, I should be doing. But I have to respond with the humility. not getting concerned, not getting frustrated, not listening to those people who have a hangover and who are complaining against you? What kind of a people they are? You are living a relaxed and contemplative life and you are making a path to the journey of the self-discovery. They are uh, are they making the pa uh, right path? Couple of drinks and hangovers in the morning and then they fight and they have a reaction. What kind of a sheep mind I have? Sheep I mind. have or they have? They have. So sheep yeah. mind, you know, when we have those impressions in us and we don't want to, we feel we are frustrated because we don't follow the convention we don't follow what the society is doing. A seeker always lives about the social consciousness. What does that mean? That I live a little about the, oh, above, above. Little about the social consciousness. Social consciousness is totally impulsive, unconscious, habitual, impulsive. Opposite of sheep mind is the independent mind. An independent mind is the pure mind. It does not think with the impurities of likes and dislikes, of craving, of obsession. It has an independence. Now, mind, you have this thought that is making me crazy, craving. Now, let me drop it. Let me think independently. Opposite of sheep mind. So you can find out. Do your dad means you know you know that we are Italians. You have to follow the social rules. Dad, I will definitely follow whatever you say. I will follow all the rules and ethics that you talk about it. One thing that I love you, I respect you, I will continue to respect you because you are my dad. But then extract, remove that sheep attitude from your mind. <clears throat> Find the other way to follow. Independent mind. I was a great rebellion against my father. My mother died when I was in 10th grade. <clears throat> my dad lived until I did my master's, almost 21, 22 years of age, or 20, yeah, 22 years of age. So he always thought that I'm a great rebellion. But I used to talk with softness as taught by my master. So he said that you stick to your independent mind. But communicate your masses with a humility. Don't fight. 
don't react. That was a great message. And that's how, because if I don't have an independent mind, <clears throat> I cannot be a great seeker. Then I'll be influenced by many things in the world. Yeah. Upset mind. What should be the re opposite of upset mind? Upset mind is the impure states of the mind. Resilient mind. Think in this way. Look at the beauty of the Eastern wisdom. You have an inner mental wealth we don't recognize. In different situations, we have a resilient mind, but we don't use it. Because I don't consciously recognize. I get upset. We all have resilient mind. Even a person with a little awareness and understanding, we know we have a resilient mind. But we recognize the mind that is upset. We don't recognize the mind that is resilient. A mind that remains calm, adaptable, and solution-oriented in the face of challenges and setbacks is the resilient mind. So we have many practices that we will take up self-discipline. Self-discipline at the physical level, at the mental level and emotional level leads to a res resilient mind. The resilient mind has an emotional calm in the poise, or you can say the emotional stability. When you have a resilient mind, you normally have a problem-solving skills. If you don't have a resilient mind, you cannot solve the problem because you are already upset. There is a problem. You have a strong ability to bounce back to the, any form of adversity in life. Any form of adversity. You have a loss in the business or profit in the business. Both are equal. You have a resilience. Your mind says, I should have a relationship with this person. Okay, move ahead. But maintain the resilient mind. If the other person is ready and move and continue, I will welcome. If he or she doesn't continue, I will welcome. <laughs> Still I welcome. The world is not the dirt. We already have more than 9 billion people now on the earth. So the person with whom I wanted relationship minus craving, he or she left me. Oh, let me endure it and understand that craving and strong likes and dislikes have no place in my mind. So you are developing another level of self-awareness. That is what the resilient mind is. You have to listen to it again. Resilient mind, integrity mind, content mind. What else? Humble mind and content mind, forgiveness mind. We all have it. We don't acknowledge, we don't recognize, we don't apply, we don't use it, or we use it subconsciously, habitually, impulsively. And as long as we are using the pure states of the mind impulsively, habitually, it is not going to work. It's a mixture. Impulsive mind is always carry the impure states of the mind. Yes, the biggest problem with your mind, the fear mind. What should be the opposite of fear mind? <laughs> Courageous mind. Mind with the courage. So again, don't misunderstand. Courage does not mean that you go out from your house and you start declaring that I am such a courageous person. 
<laughs> courageous mind. So I have to invoke the mind with the courage in times of the fear. The mind that faces the challenges and uncertainties with confidence and a growth mindset. Oh, fear is there. It means there is some opportunity. Let me start exploring this opportunity here in this fear. Then you start explaining, is the, is the fear of unknown or is the fear of known? And 99.9% .9 you will recognize it is a fear of the unknown. There is no reason to fear. Oh, so there is an element of rationalizing mind? Answer is yes. There is, a, there is an element of strong likes and dislikes mind? Yes. There is an element of upset mind? Yes. Fear is a mixture of different impure states of the mind. So courageous mind in Eastern wisdom that I'm living into with that awareness, I'm exploring, inquiring. Fear of the known or fear of the unknown? Fear of the, oh, fear of the known is not there. Am I scared of my dad, business, relations? No, not at all. That they are the fear of the known. There is no fear. Oh, so there's a fear of the unknown. When there is a fear of the unknown, it's we rational. Mind is rationalizing. Mind, are you rationalizing? Oh, I'm rationalizing. Huh? The last incident which happened to you. Mind, why are you rationalizing? Calm down. Why are you upset? Calm down. Think. We are not saying, I'm not imposing these, but we all have these pure states of the mind. We hardly recognize it. So there is a need to recognize these pure states of the mind and apply them, use them consciously. Why? To purify the mind. Why to purify the mind? To become a higher seeker. Why to become a higher seeker? to reach to the ultimate goal of self-discovery. I've already explained, but biased mind. Biased mind opposite is impartial mind. Don't move your mind with an attachment, strong likes and dislikes, with a partiality inside you first. Be very clear that I have an impartiality, unbiased state of the mind. What do you mean by unbiased state of the mind? I see the situation, person, relationship objectively. When I see it objectively, my mind is clear. It leaves the impurity. Do I have any thought with a prejudice or preferences? Let me drop it. Let me see it again. You should have seen that girl with objectively, without any prejudice. Your mind is clear. You are impartial mind. You are calm. <laughs> so yes, it's after all, it's a process of evolution, my friend. We evolve with every situation in the West and whether the situation puts me into adversity or problem. It is a process of evolution. That is what the Eastern wisdom says. Mood swing mind, let us take mood swing mind. It is calmness. More or less it is just a mood swing because of emotions. So there is emotional uh, dependence on something, some object. That is why my mood swings. So obviously then there is emotional calmness or mental calmness. You'll be surprised. 99% of the time during the day we are living in emotional stability and a balance. Only some situation triggers. 
and some situation triggers at that moment i don't recognize the calm calm mind i recognize my mood swing and then i start fighting with the mood swing mind fighting is not a solution transform is to the pure states of the mind <laughs> see that how that is why we we have this talk today what are those pure states of the mind let me define in my mind let me contemplate and reflect on it let me see what helps me to live with these pure states of the mind oh this is a very adverse situation this guy is going to create a situation uh, but because he called me and there is some rift in the business now first you sit down you say calm mind resilient mind yes i will listen to this guy now you are rehearsing contemplating i will go to this guy definitely i have a courageous mind no i'm not scared and i will go to him but i will listen to everything that he says and with that calmness i won't allow my emotions to take over me so i have an option to postpone it i have an option of a choice i will seek the time to think lot of options in a different situation so now you have already thought you have already invoked the pure states of the mind to deal with this difficult guy and it becomes a play and fun because you are dealing with the pure states of the mind oh. it just becomes a play and fun otherwise before you have a fear mind you have a upset mind you have a rationalizing mind this guy is crazy you have a strong likes and dislikes mind all these impure states of the mind has already confused you you will end up fighting oh. think you will end up fighting so you are creating a wrong situation adverse situation in your life depressed mind you can say that the opposite of depressed mind is a joyful mind we normally use in different situations i am depressed today maybe because of the fear or because someone said me something because of failure etc etc i should have a joyful mind what is joyful mind resilient mind calmness emotional calmness is there a sense of gratitude is there even in the face of life challenges just before you i was giving a lesson to the new jersey group and uh, the topic was how the charity purifies the mind so in eastern wisdom we say that charity is a mental attitude <clears throat> of gratefulness a mental inner mental attitude of contributorship it is an attitude of givingness instead of possessiveness we translate uh, that then we also say we have at a physical level of charity we have an emotional level of charity what is emotional level of charity empathy compassion towards a particular situation people and relationship and there is an intellectual charity so we say the intellectual charity is considered the highest charity what is that in highest level of charity i am giving you the self knowledge so that you can deal in your life in any adversity in a problem but if you have an idea of a selfishness in giving the charity it is not a charity that is how we we understand the charity 
So with that sense of the charity, it becomes, the mind is full of, becomes joyful all the time. I, I don't want to grab. Grabbing attitude is gone. The I, attitude of possessiveness is gone. <clears throat> attitude of givingness is gone. Uh, come. Attitude of being a contributor is gone. Come. The main cause of the depressed mind is extreme selfishness. And that extreme selfishness depresses because that idleness is always there. In relations, in people, in the family, and that causes a lot of problems. Uh, more or less the same thing with an obsessed mind. You do the obs obsession, so it's a free mind. It's a mind with the freedom. Mind with the freedom. So my friend, we have to, we have to remind ourselves and you contemplate. Oh, this is a difficult guy. So what kind of a pure states of the mind I should have before I approach him and talk to him? Think of it. Mm. Pick up two or three pure states of the mind. Pick up the traits and use those traits while dealing with that guy. You're happy. You come out of the happiness. You come out of the, your adversity. You come out of your challenges. You want Feel, you feel, oh, this, this is not a challenge at all. This is just a, uh, <clears throat> just a play and a fun. Mm. I told you, I think, you know, last year I went to call and the, the lady, beautiful lady at the cashier, she was laughing, making fun. And I recognized in her eyes that there's a lot of depression. Mm. So I said, I'm very happy and I'm grateful to you that you are making your life full of the joy and her fun. So she looked at me and, uh, but I want to ask you, are you the same funny and joyful guy at your home? And she has withdrawn herself. I said, you have to get rid of that. <laughs> so I pass on, sometime I pass on these uh, remarks. <laughs> I like that. Casually. And she, so what you do? I gave an indirect reply. I said, I put this machine into order. This machine. <laughs> Are you counselor? I said you, that you can assume, you can think of it. That is your choice. Think. So, first you remember all the pure states of the mind, explain in your mind at least for about two or three weeks daily, so that what happens the moment you have a fear, oh, so my, I know I, have, I should move to the courageous mind. Here are the traits. Rationalizing mind. No, I have to move to the independent mind. Cheap mind, independent mind. So you already have a choice. We don't have a choice when we live with that in pure states of the mind. It pops up and then we are frustrated. We live in frustration or fear or anxiety for a couple of days. After that, we come down and we repeat the same thing. We no, need not to repeat these impure states of the mind in all that. That will make us a seeker. 